because it has so many new pieces of information and I'm trying to incorporate everything into a cohesive video is beyond my skill level. So I'm going to appeal to everyone's inner child instead. Once upon a time, there was a prince who wanted to marry a princess, but she would have to be a real princess. He traveled all over the world to find one, but nowhere could he get what he wanted. There were princesses enough, but it was difficult to find out whether they were real ones. There was always something about them that was not as it should be. So he came home again and was sad, for he would have liked very much to have a real princess. One evening, a terrible storm came on. There was thunder and lightning and the rain poured down in torrents. Suddenly, a knocking was heard at the city gate and the old king went to open it. It was a princess standing out there in front of the gate. But good gracious, what a sight! The rain and the wind had made her look. The water ran down from her hair and clothes. It ran down to the toes of her shoes and out again at the heels. And yet, she said that she was a real princess. Well, we'll soon find that out, thought the old queen. But she said nothing, went into the bedroom, took all the bedding off the bedstead, and laid a pea on the bottom. Then she took twenty mattresses and laid them on the pea, and then twenty eider-down beds on top of the mattresses. On this, the princess had to lie all night. And in the morning, she was asked how she had slept. Oh, very badly, said she. I have scarcely closed my eyes all night. Heaven only knows what was in the bed, but I was lying on something hard so that I am black and blue all over my body. It's horrible. Now, they knew that she was a real princess because she had felt the pee right through the twenty mattresses and the twenty eider-down beds. Nobody but a real princess could be as sensitive as that. So the prince took her for his wife, for now he knew that he had a real princess, and that the pee was put in the museum where it may still be seen, if no one has stolen it. There. That is a true story. How many of us were read The Princess and the Pea by Hans Christian Andersen and his children? Were we taught to empathize with the princess? Or were we encouraged to ridicule her for being too sensitive? According to Maria Tatar and the annotated Hans Christian Andersen, the story and the princess's heightened sensitivity to the bee it is more demonstrative of her nobility than any documentation of her birth. While Tatar doesn't address the history that would support both Tatar's claim and Anderson's implied claim, nobody but a real princess could be as sensitive as that. If we look at universal fairy tales, we see a recurring theme of being sensitive to the earth to nature, to other people, equates to a higher consciousness and therefore deserving of respect. So why did Tosbig, on page 179 of his The Life of Hans Christian Andersen, condemn the story for spreading the false idea that great ladies must always be so terribly thin-skinned? The benefits from convincing children to ignore their own intuitions, their own feelings, who benefits from convincing parents that our children are better off if they are desensitized and toughened up for the real world. So this week, I encourage everyone to find those old fairy tales, whether they were shared orally, 
read to you as a child, you read them to your children, or you didn't discover them until recently. Fairy tales are an important tradition in all these societies. Personally, I am most fond of Dr. Clarissa Pinkola Estes' ability to sing over the bones of old archetypes and breathe new life into stories long discounted as a means of healing the modern self from generations of hidden and covered up trauma. Anyone who's not familiar with the women who run through the walls and anyone struggling to reacquaint themselves with their inner child, feel free to make an appointment with me over Zoom. Dr. Estes is a great inspiration for new ways of looking at the world around us to reinvigorate our hope and guidance of responsibility and relationship with women. I am more than